So I went on the web and found a group uh, of data IO people and uh, in one of them was very helpful. His name is Al Marin and he's a former repairman for uh, this type of equipment. And he told me, well, tough luck, just go through all the tests and pointed me to them and that, those are the ones I tried already but I only done the first few, the DC tests and there are pages of them and it keeps going and um, 64 tests in total and some optional ones and uh, some that I really need to do there, uh, some easy ones, the DC ones, but they are really this machine is programmable everything, so every pin has a DAC. Uh, so here's the, you need to check them, this is the load supply DAC uh, and the current DAC. And uh, you can, uh, you have to check the, the ramps here, no, it has three settings. And there's the VCC DAC and the C supply DAC. And it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, so I have my work all cut out for myself, checking all those things. So I am back uh, trying to calibrate every test they have to figure out what's wrong, why it's not programming. So I went through the first pages, the first of the pages of test, and the first 12 tests uh, came out good, and I adjusted right on the money. Those are all DC voltages and current. And uh, then it gets more interesting, uh, they are dynamic tests, uh, rise tests, and I have it set up here. And this is different rise time for uh, one of the patterns. And I'm supposed to adjust it uh, so it looks like this, which is, it's pretty close but right now I am under it so I'll adjust that so I have three traces to adjust with one resistor and right now it's too short so I want to make those longer but not by much I don't think that's my problem there you go it varies things okay so I'm going to run single traces um, this is 30 microsecond and it should be 33, okay. I have to do it some more, quite a bit more. That's the uh, VCC DAC and it's all good looking like a picture. So some of the current measurements get tricky, you have to put power resistors uh, in parallel or, or some pins and uh, that's to check the uh, DAC current which is uh, again in spec okay I completed the 64 tests and uh, they all passed except a few at the end uh, on the address lines and the data lines uh, would fail kind of randomly uh, so one pass I had 18 and 20 fail and the other pass I had other ones and I cannot uh, find anything else then uh, probably my sockets are to blame for that uh, so because I reseed them and I get a different kind of errors so I'll go and order new so zip sockets and solder them in all right we are back with my data IO with a good gillion problems on it um, so the Next one seems to be bass sockets, and uh, so I got a whole bunch here, including some I got during my trip to Japan. I went to Akihabara, which is the place where you get all those things for next to nothing. Famous place in Japan uh, for electronic components in Tokyo. And there's a fair amount of circuitry on the board, but I think I lucked out. I think the sockets are on sockets. So I can just pull them out and replace them. Except you have to be a little careful they're screwed in. There you go. And you can tell what was happening. This is the sort of screw that was in there. So 
or rusted so no matter how contact much contact cleaner you put on there that's not going to fix it there is that much rust okay all new connectors and they are way shinier bad connectors in the bin of bad vintage parts okay so we have new transistors and new sockets um, and I put it all back together I'm going to see if I can test and program chips now uh, so since it's not connected to the computers we have to do it by hand uh, let me first test that this is blank there is no command for it so you have to fill RAM which is select A2 fill RAM with FF I'm going to wait for that one takes a while alright and now we are going to verify it's blank so we should do verify RAM take the defaults here against the device take the defaults here and this is an Intel 32k really old device 2724 27 family 24 pinout it lights up here and now it checks out okay and um, well let's try to program something in it uh, so let's fill RAM select a2 fill RAM with uh, a5 that has a lot of ones and zeros and off we go alright and now we are going to try to program so we copy data from RAM take the defaults again to the device and it's the same family as before and we just press start I guess start I test the device for blanks. It programs it. It's not giving any error. Verifies it twice. Ta da! It works now. Wow. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs>